I see teachers that are very much engaged in their teaching. I see that the success you get, you know, seeing these outcomes makes for very happy teachers. You know, sometimes I see people say, well, I, I am using technology, but I'm a history teacher. And they're a math teacher, and my other neighbor here is a phys ed teacher. When we teach such different things, what do we all have in common? I say, well, hold on. If you use SAMR and associated models as a common language, sure, you're teaching different things, but you're going to start to see patterns, commonalities. You know, you, the history teacher, might be using visualization tools to get to certain aspects of history at an augmentation to modification levels. And the phys ed teacher might be using visualization tools to get at something different in terms of sports. The math teacher might be doing it to get at certain ideas, say, in algebra. But all of you are trying to get at some tricky concept for your students, making it more concrete to them through visualization tools. If you frame how and why you're using those tools in terms of SAMR, you now have a common language for discussion, and again, a common language to enable, facilitate the activities of a community of practice. The most basic benefit is, of course, improvement in student outcomes if you look at this uh, through the lens of some standardized measurement instrument. And, and that's uh, the first thing that people look at, and it's there. We saw it, for instance, in Maine, in terms of how students were using the laptops, and we've seen it throughout whenever people look at this type of assessment of a program. So there's very definitely a net increase uh, in, say, standard scores, et cetera, registered by students. But there's, to my mind at least, even more interesting outcomes in as much as working at the upper levels of SAMR, modification and redefinition, tends to be associated with greater gains by students in both comprehension, but not just, well, can they remember facts for an example, what can they do with what they've learned? What gives them greater agency, greater uh, possibilities for using their knowledge? It also opens up uh, more possibilities for forms of student interaction where we're looking at elements such as peer mentorship, learning from each other. And then there's one more thing that I view as frankly very crucial and that is for teachers to talk about what they're doing, build up an effective community of practice in their school. For beginning teachers my recommendation is look at the model, look at examples of the model, then get together in teams with other teachers and create what I call rough summer ladders. Pick a unit of instruction, something that matters to you, and say, okay, as a team, we're going to figure out how to incorporate technology in such a way that we go up the levels of summer. Rough out some ideas. Try to, if you will, get a little bit of a taste for what it's like to incorporate the technology in this fashion. And then, yes, translate that into something in your own practice. It's not everything you try at uh, you know, the upper levels is going to work out. But the practice of working at the upper levels of SAMR makes you realize that, okay, that didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to, but I can learn from it. And from this first trial, I can develop changes to my teaching practice that will make it better, more powerful, more effective next time. We've always been in a technology-rich field in education. After all, books are technologies, you know, blackboards are technologies, sheets of paper, pencils, they're all technologies. And throughout the years, you know, decades, centuries, we've evolved different ways of doing things by saying, oh wait, I now have a new tool that allows me to do some things differently, better, and so on. And the interesting thing with uh, what we see happening with computer technologies is that the rapid evolution means that now we have a rapidly evolving array of possibilities available to us. Thank you.